Jane. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Lady from Brighton Pavilion, but I do not agree with her views, and I hope I will be able to explain why. I believe, Mr. Speaker, we have to start with the political reality of the House of Commons as it is today. It is abundantly clear that there is no majority in this House for a no deal Brexit. Therefore, as someone that supports Brexit and wants to see it happen, I believe the Prime Minister was always right to start by negotiating a deal. Those calling for her to walk away without negotiating a deal forget that it was always going to be extremely difficult because of the diametrically opposing views on this issue, which, which represent different value systems. These arguments cut across political parties, as we've seen in all the debates in this place. It is clear from what I see in this House, as a member of 18 months standing, that the opposition want to frustrate Brexit. They've made it clear that they would vote down any deal that the Prime Minister brings back, thereby ignoring the democratically expressed view of their constituents as well as mine. And it's also clear the majority of MPs actually don't support Brexit. I do support Brexit. Therefore, I believe the calls for a second referendum are completely <coughs> misguided. But the divisions that exist on all sides of the House, on our, our benches as well as the other benches, are being exploited to stop Sorry. Brexit. And I fear that this is where we're heading if we don't support this deal. So this deal has been criticised by people on all sides of the House. It's been criticised by those who want to remain. And it's been criticised by, by those who want to leave without a deal. As I said, I support Brexit. But I am pragmatic in the best traditions of my party. I deal with the world as it is, not how I would like it to be. And I, I have that view because I spent nearly 30 years in business before coming into this place. And I recognise that sometimes you have to make compromises to get most of what you want. If you pursue perfection, you end up without anything. I believe that the risks of voting, there are risks, of course, of voting for this deal. We all heard the Attorney General yesterday, and he was perfectly honest and transparent about those risks. I am not naive about those risks either, but I have to take a political judgment about how, if I vote down this deal, that carries more risks. <coughs> I never said it would be easy to leave the EU, Mr Speaker, having spent 30 years in business, as I said, but this is certainly not a reason to ignore the referendum result. Those who sit outside the negotiation room, from all sides of this argument, find it incredibly easy to criticise the Prime Minister. I actually wonder how many of them would, in reality, do a better job. Absolutely. And actually, Mr Speaker, when I go out on the streets of Redditch, I find there's a silent majority out in the country who admire the Prime Minister for what she's done and are imploring me to back her to provide the certainty for the businesses in my town that employ my constituents on on whom they defend, depend for their livelihoods. Indeed, Mr Speaker, the BBC World Service, was in, World, World Service forgive me, was in Redditch today on the first stop of a nationwide tour interviewing people, and there was widespread support for the Prime Minister's deal on that programme. And I would like to say, surely, if the Prime Minister was motivated by narrow party political interests, she would have come to this House and said, let's support a no-deal Brexit. She knows that would have had overwhelming support from our side of the House, as we've, as we've heard from colleagues. She has sought to strike a pragmatic balance and take on board views of members from all sides of the House and the 48%, and I think she's absolutely right to do that. What we've heard is a lot of criticism from people, but the people who've criticised haven't presented any sensible options to solve the intractable constitutional problems that face us due to the Northern Ireland situation, nor have they really paid due regard to the businesses that employ and who have welcomed the certainty from this plan. I think there's a very good point about the WTO rules. If we were to leave on those rules and then seek to negotiate something else in the future, that would be two sets of rules that businesses in my constituency have got to plan for. We've here we have a plan that they can get on board with and make plans for. It is a deal that presents certainty to us. It's a divorce. It's messy. In that situation, neither side gets what it wants. But given the uncertainty of events in this House of Commons, it strikes me that we're now faced with an incredibly clear choice. 
If we don't vote for this deal, the parliamentary arithmetic dictates we cannot now leave without a deal. All scenarios mean chaos, political chaos, turmoil and further division, which would not be good for my constituents in Redditch at all. This decision is far from simple, and I am aware that by making this decision I am going to disappoint many people. That is life in politics. But I have read all the documents. I want to reassure my constituents I have studied them carefully. I have listened to the debates. I have engaged with ministers. I have engaged with my constituents, with local businesses, with people on the street. I am not part of any faction or any group. I make this decision hand on heart. I believe it is in the best interests of my constituents in Redditch and in the country, and I offer the Prime Minister my support in voting for this deal, which I believe will deliver the Brexit that people campaigned for and voted for when they cast their vote.